So I've got a, a pretty straightforward universal statement here, right? A student's enrollment status will be clearly defined by their school, so there shouldn't be a problem determining the truth value of the predicate for any given student and therefore for the group of students, right? But there's a potential issue here. Suppose there are no students in the room. Is the statement then true or false, or did we come up with something that's just undecidable? Well, to answer this, it's easier to look at its negation, right? And remember that the truth value of the original statement has to be the opposite of the truth value of the, no of the negation. So it can be helpful to look at the negation since it may be easier to make a decision about. Right, so I've got the negation here using the methods we talked about in the last lecture. And it will be, there exists a student in the room who is not enrolled in the class. Now, if the room is empty, this is more clearly false. Right, since there are no students in the room at all, there can't be one who is enrolled. And since the negation is false, the original statement must be true even in the case where there are no students in the room. So let's take that idea a step further. Right, take a look at this universal conditional statement. For every negative number, if the number is greater than three, then it's prime. Right now we know from our earlier discussion, several lectures back, that a universal statement is true if and only if the predicate is true for every value in the domain. However, in this case, the antecedent is always false, and this creates a problem. Similar to our previous example, there are no values here that we can test in the conditional statement since there aren't any values in the domain that make that antecedent true. So based on our previous discussion, you would have to conclude that this statement is true. However, this causes a problem. Right? This statement is identical to the previous one, except it has the opposite consequent. Right? It, it, the, it, it ends, then it's not prime, rather than then it is prime. By the same argument I just used with the original statement, this second one must also be true. Okay, so this kind of statement uh, where the conclusion, right, where p of x is false for every value of x, so the statement is true regardless, so I could put anything in there in the q of x position, and we would have to conclude that this statement is true. This is what's called uh, a vacuous truth, or a statement that's true by default. And in, in this context, where the consequent could be um, either true or false, we, we effectively aren't getting any useful information from the statement, right? Which is why these are described as being vacuous. Okay, now I'd like to qualify my previous statement just a little, right? There are some contexts um, where these vacuous statements, it, where actually it, it is useful to know that they're true. For example, uh, later, our, later we'll be talking about something called mathematical induction. In a mathematical induction, you have to start by proving a base case is true. Usually, that, that's the case where uh, the number of things you're looking at is either zero or one, right? And sometimes it, it is impossible for it to be zero or one. And you end up with this kind of vacuous truth situation. And yes, okay, um, you do actually kind of indirectly get some practical information from it. So. Uh, my statement that they don't give us useful information was maybe a little strong outside of the world uh, of practical application. Okay, so looking ahead, uh, in, in the next lecture, we're, we're going to uh, revisit some ideas for, uh, that we talked about previously. We're, we're going to talk about the converse, the inverse, and the contrapositive. Right? Uh, that's really going to be uh, a very straightforward, relatively short lecture. The the idea those concepts, uh, when we're talking about universal conditional statements, really are very much identical 
uh, to what we talked about earlier when we were talking uh, purely about conditional statements.